Tom Maguire. So I have a very interesting book for you today called Taming the Four Horsemen by, if you can see there, Robin Hanbury Tennyson. This book, I wasn't really too sure what to expect, but um, it's really, really interesting. It's I found it really quite easy to get through. This book just kept me engaged the whole time, actually. Um, Robin Hanbury Tennyson, the author, is, I think he's 83, and he was struck with COVID very early on. I think it was back in March, potentially, um, and he managed to survive. He was really in, ill in hospital for some time on a ventilator, but he managed to come out the other end, which at 83 years old was pretty miraculous, really. Um, look him up online. He's got some stuff on YouTube. There's a few videos of him. He's an explorer, been an explorer pretty much all of his life, as far as I can tell. Really interesting guy. He co-founded Survival International. Look them up as well. They are a charity whose purpose it is to look after tribes around the world. I'm guessing people like the Sentinelese, you know, the Sentinelese on the island where that chap from America went in 2018. He um, thought he'd go out there and preach the word of Christianity to them and they killed him. Um, I think he was probably aware that they could be hostile to strangers and, you know, they've been living their way for how many hundreds or thousands of years and he went along there and, yeah, that was what happened. So, but look that up, that's quite interesting. Um, I'd be quite interested to hear what Robin had to say about them, actually, because I was fascinated by that story when I heard that. So they are there to, like I say, to look after tribes, to make sure that we don't kind of go in there and destroy their <clears throat> their ancient traditions and kind of give them diseases and whatever else it is that we, we tend to do when we go into places. Um, but yeah, so I've read nearly 100 books so far this year, a combination of audiobooks and physical books. Um, and that's not to brag, that's, I somehow managed to do that even though I've got two kids under three and um, two businesses to run. I'm obsessed with reading, I love reading, most of the stuff I read is non-fiction, a lot of it is personal development, even if it's not personal development I always try to give you something that I've taken from the book that is worthwhile from a personal development point of view because I think books are so important to improving improving our lives this book's just really really interesting um it's called taming the four horsemen horsemen as i said it's radical solutions to defeat pandemics war famine and the death of the planet and joanna lumley on there says matchless man hugely important book joanna lumley you can't really beat save fairer than that can you there's also a comment from Sir Ranulph fines a great champion of environmental activism and his extensive travels have given him many insights and I have started to do a bit of research. Uh, I know a book's been good or has interested me when I go away and rather than going straight on to the next book, because I have so many books lined up that I want to read. Normally I finish one, I open the next one, but with this one I've done a bit of research around some of the stuff in there because I just found it so interesting and that, that says a lot to me about a book. If a book makes me want to do that, then it's kind of something special really. And out of the many books that I've read this year, that's only really happened with a few of them. It might be to do with the fact that it's Robin Hanbury Tennyson, he nearly died of COVID, and that's so kind of relevant. Also the fact that I've known of him for quite a while. And I went on a school trip to his house once, which was amazing. Um, he took us up one of the clay mountains in St Austell in Cornwall, which is just outside of where I live at the minute, actually. And I just have quite a vivid, vivid memory of going out there, as I must have been sort of eight years old or something like that. Absolutely loved it. It was just quite fascinating. There was this explorer guy who was taking us around his his farm and his land and stuff. It was amazing. It was really cool. So that, that kind of sticks in my mind. I hadn't heard much about him at all for the last sort of 20, 30 years, I suppose, particularly. Maybe snippets here and there, potentially, but not very much. So I knew he was a writer, but I didn't particularly, I hadn't paid much attention to his stuff. So I saw this one come out and I thought I would give it a go. And like I say, not disappointed at all. Really, really interesting. I will probably be looking at some of his other stuff as well, actually. One of my favourite books of all time, as you will probably know if you follow this channel, is Alfred Lansing's Endurance about Shackleton and his team of men who went to the Arctic. Um, I absolutely love that book. So exploring and those kind of, that kind of non-fiction adventure sort of stuff is just, I absolutely love it. And 
that isn't really what this book is about. He talks about the Maya civilization, and he does mention some of his travels, some of the places that he's been to, but that isn't necessarily, it's not necessarily about his travels. It's just, these are kind of his opinions on things that we should be doing or could be doing uh, to improve our situation in terms of global warming, to save the planet, basically. And he talks about how we owe it to future generations to leave the place in a better state than we found it. And that's exactly, I couldn't agree with that more. I think that we need to think about the legacy we leave behind. And I certainly don't want to be remembered as someone who didn't take any responsibility and was actually part of the problem. I, I think that's that's an awful thing to, to think that you're going to be remembered for. And I said a very similar thing when I reviewed David Attenborough's A Life on Our Planet a few weeks or months ago, whenever that whenever that was. Exactly the same message, really. Um, I've been to the Amazon rainforest. I went with my brother 10, was it 10 years ago? It feels like a couple of years ago. My God, probably 10 years ago. We went to we went to Peru, we went to Colombia, Ecuador, um, Iquitos in the Amazon, went there. And we were taken, we were taken into the jungle. We went in a boat and we saw uh, water snakes and things. And we saw sloths, we saw some monkeys at one point. But actually, we saw very little wildlife and it actually felt quite disappointingly kind of barren. And I remember the guide saying to us, it's nothing like what it used to be and things. It was quite a depressing trip in a way, really, to be honest. It was amazing. It was lovely. But yeah, he was just saying, yeah, you've got to go to somewhere like Costa Rica or Madagascar or somewhere like that if you want to see wildlife, because this is just nothing. It's just been ruined, basically. So that was quite depressing. And that's basically what what, what Robin Hanbury Tennyson and people like David Attenborough say as well, that, you know, it's nothing like what it used to be. And we have something called baseline syndrome, basically, don't we? Where we, people like myself, you know, I went to see the Amazon, like I say, 10 years ago. So I know no different. I didn't see it 50 years ago. So to me, that's just kind of the way it's always been. And as I'm told otherwise, which I was, you're used to what you see, basically. You, you look up at the sky here in Cornwall and the number of birds you see, you consider to be normal. But actually, probably not that long ago, there were many more. So yeah, it's very frightening, really. And uh, global warming, drought, famine, as he says, pandemics, war, all these things are a real threat. And it's something that we need to be having a conversation about. And like I always say, when it comes to personal development and improving ourselves, we need to be prepared to have conversations. We need to not be so kind of easily offended, really, and kind of getting upset that someone disagrees with us. He talks about manipulating the weather, which is something that we've apparently been able to do since about 1940, which I was quite ignorant about. But I found that very, very interesting. So cloud seeding, where we pump sort of silver, is it silver nitrate or different chemicals into the clouds to cause it to rain um and he says how that in some of these really dry areas could make a difference to people free electricity for people through solar power could be a big solution these are all they're all quite radical solutions or suggestions he says but we just need to put more money into it more research into it and to me that's perfectly that that sounds quite reasonable really the only thing I didn't really agree with him on actually was he talks about space exploration and he thinks that's a bit of a waste of time because you know why would you why would you spend so much money looking out there when no one wants to be out there and I kind of get that but I think there is a lot of that there has been a lot of technology that's come from the money that's been pumped into space exploration and I think we do I think we do tend to learn a lot by pushing the boundaries um, of science that we can use back here on Earth and I also think we need to understand that. I think we need to sort of think bigger than than the place we live in a way. Although he does argue that the place we live is much bigger than we actually give it credit for and there's microscopic levels of things and, and all that. So it's really interesting. He talks about aquaponics and there's a good TED talk on aquaponics, which I watched earlier today as well, which is really interesting. I love all the stuff about the Maya civilization. I, I love ancient history. I love thinking about... I, I, I think I get I get the impression that he's quite a humanist, actually. I get the impression that he cares. I get the feeling that um, a lot of the books that I read, I tend to feel that they're quite selfish and the person is just kind of writing for their own benefit, potentially. Whereas with this, and when you watch him on YouTube and things, I, I, I get the feeling, maybe I'm, be, maybe I'm being naive, but I get the feeling that he does actually care, which is quite refreshing, I think, and causes you to kind of connect with him as, as, as the writer, as the author, narrator, uh, whatever. But yeah, I'm fascinated by ancient history. I watched a Netflix a Netflix documentary called The Secrets of the Saqqara Tomb not long ago. Absolutely fascinating. I just think to think of history as hundreds or thousands of years and, and people and what they were like back then and 
he talks about the Maya civilization and how they how they uh, became extinct. And, well, they had the excuse that they didn't have any scientific data to back up any predictions, basically, which is an excuse that we don't have. Um, so yeah, fascinating, really interesting book. I'm not going. I don't want to give any spoilers. I just I just want to kind of touch on some of the things. I just found it easy to read, uh, enjoyable, really interesting. It really got my imagination going in different ways. It got my imagination going in terms of kind of ancient history, like the Maya civilization, but also some of the technologies that we have that we haven't, we don't really talk about. Um, the weather manipulation stuff, um, aquaponics, you know, the potential for free electricity for everyone. It really gets you thinking. And I highly recommend this one. I recommend it not only as a kind of personal development, you know, it isn't strictly a personal development book, but it's very important for personal development as far as I'm concerned. We need to have an understanding of the situation that we're in and we need to have a think about what we can do, what we should do. And we need to get, I, I want to say we need to get talking about it. It's probably too late for talk. We need action. I heard John Peterson talking the other day. It was an old video and he was talking about Greta Thunberg. And to be fair, I found that Greta Thunberg thing quite irritating. I must admit, her shouting, how dare you and stuff. I did kind of think... Yes, how dare you? I get it. I get that young people are pissed off, and and rightly so. But actually, you're probably a lot more privileged than you make out, aren't you? And actually, you kind of benefit probably a lot more from the system that's there than you know. So, <clears throat> yeah. But then John Peterson talks, and he basically says it's a waste of time. You're not going to give up your iPads. You're not going to give up your cars. You're not going to turn the heating off, you, you need all these things. And his argument is that we need to get countries to a certain level uh, where they care about climate change, because when you're desperately poor, you don't care. You, you don't have the luxury of caring about climate change and things like that. What you care about is your next meal and clean water and the absolute basics. So he basically says that we need to sort of keep going the way we're going to get countries into a better state so that they can then start caring. And he's basically saying, even then, we don't know what to do about it. And obviously, Robin Hanbury Tennyson here has some suggestions, but they're not necessarily watertight solutions, are they? They're ideas, they're potentially very good ideas, and we should put some more money into them and some more research into them to see if anything can be done to make a positive difference, to change things. But they're not guaranteed solutions. Um, so, yeah, there's that side to it as well. But very interesting book, highly recommend it. I actually think it'd be nice to hear to have an audio version as well, actually. Um, just because, why not? Lots of books nowadays have audio versions. Why shouldn't that one? It's really good, actually. It's a really good book. Leave it there for you. Robin Hanbury Tennyson, look him up. Quite a legend, actually. Thank you. See you later.